Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man X Hardtype. In the last part, I collected 100% of the items, so now it's time to finish the game by going through the Sigma Palace stages. And from here on out, the game gets much more challenging, as it produces a mixture of the previous challenges that we saw before. Like, we had the turtle challenges uh, in Spark Mandrel stage, where we had to wall jump over a gap to destroy these, but in addition to that, we have several of them at once, as well as jamming girls flowing, uh, floating here, which makes it more easy to fall in the pit. Here, and like in the original game, it's time to go over the floating platform segment. It's still possible to uh, shimmy your way up on the, from the right cliffs and skip this entire segment if you're clever enough, but I would just take the normal route. It's mostly on change, but it's a little bit more challenging jumps. Over here is some close quarters combat with very little space to jump over. More turn cannons as well as gun bolts. Here is where you really want to use your special weapons like the shotgun eyes or the fire wave, which I should have done over here instead of just using my base weapons. Especially like the shotgun eyes, which will make targeting these turn cannons much simpler, as well as these ball de vues. Sure they're weak, but it's kind of hard to hit without using your special weapons at uh, Robot Master. Maverick weapons. Alright, here's Vial. I would have shown off the glitch where you can actually just oh, run right into the cap into the store before the, the text block finishes, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. And just like in the original game, a Vile trashes a zeroed combat, so it's time for the next unwill unwillable fight against Vile. However, unlike the first one, it's actually possible to die if you don't get hit by his stunned spark beam uh, orbs. This actually happened once to me, hilariously enough. I thought it was a glitch at first, but it seems to be by design. Strange. Like, if, you've, if you avoid that spark orb and get hit by him again, you can easily die. Whereas in the first encounter, he would actually jump back, guaranteed. Alright, Zero's broken out and he'll blow up Vile's right armor. Now, in comparison to his, well, original fight, Vile is, well, I would say slightly more challenging. He moves a bit faster, especially with firing his weapons, but he's really predictable and easy to get through. Out of all the bosses, I would say he's the least changed. Though, I tried using the Hadouken against him, but it's kind of hard to pull off due to speed. Basically, just like before, Hilder tried jumping over you, going to one side of the screen, firing his stun orbs, and then at one point jumping to the middle of the screen and releasing those two uh, bombs, which will split up into two orbs. He's faster, so you have to be more on your guard to hit him. Also, strangely enough, the, the dash bug works on him as well. The dash bug being the bug where if you dash and fire one of your weapons at a at him, he'll take double damage. I don't think this works with the other bosses, as I believe it was patched out by Hard Hunt. Though, more testing is necessary, as I didn't uh, attempt to use the dash bug in the other bosses. And as such, Zero has fallen, just like the original. If we didn't get the arm upgrade, we would have gotten from zero right over here. Here's kind of a precision jump over here. Get on the specific part of the wall, do a dash jump, make it here. Here we have a lot of sign fallers and hoganmers. Uh, it's kind of a nightmare getting through here. I suggest you just use the chameleon sting like here and just go invulnerable to avoid this entire mess. Now we have to climb up this vertical shaft with all these dodge blasters, um, sign fallers, as well as uh, uh, Hogan Mers. 
the most challenging part of the whole game is due to the positioning of how they are relative to how you get up so you can easily get nicked by their maces. And the respawning dodge blasters don't do not help matters at all. And unfortunately the rolling shield doesn't really have enough strength to take on multiple of these. So a lot of precision while jumping is involved. This is one of the places where I wish I had a W tank so I could reuse the chameleon sting several times in succession. Alright, here's the bo boss rematch against uh, Boomer Kawanger. This time I'll be using his weakness, the hom homing torpedo. This is also where I learned that when he teleports in you have a brief window of where you can damage him. It's kind of silly as that was in the original game as well, but I completely overlooked it for some reason. And for the rest, I'll be finishing off with the Buster. In fact, well, with that with that in mind, this boss rematch is much easier due to the fact that no spikes in the ceiling, and the walls are continuous. And Quanger goes down for the final time. He was such a pain initially. But with all these upgrades, he's much easier to go through, especially with the extra knowledge. Another careful jumping segment, I decided to just circumvent it by using the neon jump. A lot of spikies, jammingers, and metals here. Ow. And yeah, this took several uh, attempts of practice so I didn't get hit by these jammingers while in midair falling into the pit. They're quite m annoying here due to their aggressiveness and positioning of, or construction of the room, but if you memorize it, it isn't too bad. Alrighty, we're moving on to Bow Spider who is basically the, the same as before, but the main difference here is that he increases his speed much faster than before. Compare when he gets a damage, instead of... He, he increases his speed like the original, as well as dropping his spiders occasionally when he reaches the top, but in comparison to before, he speeds up much faster. So, the same strategy from the original fight is recommended. Quickly look over which path he'll be taking from the wires here and move away uh, from his position. It's it's more difficult than it looks like, so I, I suggest several about rounds of practice. Or just use the Hadouken or Shotgun Ice to speed up the process even faster. Although be, be quick with this, especially near the end where he opens and closes his weak point really quickly. One more hit should do it. And down he goes. Quite a re repetitive boss, but due to his increased speed, he also falls faster in this version. Alright, Sigma Stage 1 has been completed, but the worst is still yet to come. On to Sigma stage number two. All the weapons are free filled, thankfully. Now beginning with a lot more precision jumping and flamingos and batons. Ah uh, yes, I remember this segment from Storm Eagle. Now it's even more challenging as you must uh, basically hang off the side of it and then make the jump here while avoiding all these batons. Quite annoying. Also, those batons are d are. Basically cheating gravity by hanging in midair or perching in midair. A lot of spikes here. But not too much of a problem if you're careful. All right, time for the next boss rematch. This time against Chill Penguin. 
Now, I used Chill Penguin's weakness against him, aka the Fire Wave, but as it only does one damage, it's actually slower than just doing the normal method I used originally. That is, by using the Ch Buster. So yeah, don't do what I was doing here unless you're at risk getting hit. Instead of this, use your normal Buster shots. Especially your level 3 Buster shots, due to his Penguin's slow motion or slow movement, it's easy to just use the Buster to quickly kill him. After all, he is a Penguin. Well, Reploid Penguin, but same reasoning. It's still pretty funny to see when he gets stunlocked with all these fire waves. Like here, but sometimes when he gets ready to slide, he becomes immune to it, unfortunately. And the charged up version of Fire Wave isn't really helpful. So yeah, back down to my uh, Buster. I could have just sped up the process by using the Hadouken, but I completely forgot of using it. Plus it's kind of finicky with my controller setup, so... I don't really use it uh, except in the extras. There he goes. In comparison to the first fight, it's a little bit harder due to the smaller room, but you can manipulate them a little bit easier with, with your upgraded arsenal. More spikes, now we're going to the armor, the mech unit second. Right armor, I mean. With all the sign fallers, armor soldiers, dig labors. I want to try keeping this right armor alive as, as long as possible due to a jump coming right up. Right over here, dash, immediately jump out of the right armor, and, or dash jump specifically, and dodge all these dig labors. There should be a right armor coming right up soon. Just wanted to take this sign faller out, and then you can make it over here and destroy this other armor soldier. And then disengage the right armor. Now we need to climb up this segment with all these turn cannons on floating platforms and sign fallers coming from above, as well as dart blasters. Ah, this jump was so difficult to do with all these dodge blasters, as well as the turn cannon on the top. I, I wanted to avoid taking damage from these spikes, but at the same time I didn't want to f I get hit by all these enemies. I just suggest skipping this entire segment completely by using the Sting Chameleon's charged up version. The Chameleon Sting. Oh, Storm Eagle. Easiest boss originally, even easier with the charged up buster, as well as the his weakness, the Chameleon Sting. Really, it's about the same room as before with no changes. Maybe it's a little bit larger, but it's about the same. He's even more, he's even very susceptible to the Hadouken due to his... He stays stationary for quite a while. Stationary in the sense that he stays stationary enough in order for you to execute it. As several of the bosses don't provide enough time for you to execute the Hadouken maneuver without taking a hit yourself. And down he goes. Poor Eagle. At least he is in the... In the original game he wasn't the easiest, but now he is. Alright, pressing onwards. Another vertical segment coming right up, with Hogan mirrors on spikes, and more sign fallers. And spikies. Oh joy. Ah, uh, making this jump is so difficult I decided to just use the uh, Chameleon Sting's uh, charged up version. Normally I would just tank a hit there. And coming right up is Rang the Bangda. Oh my goodness. I would say Rang the Bangda was the hardest boss out of all the Sigma Fortress bosses, except barring probably the final boss fight against Sigma. Now, regardless of whether you destroy his eyes or not, the walls will close in on you. So, uh, so you have to be uh, careful on your guard, as well as the eyes firing a bit faster. And I couldn't really use their weakness because I used up all my Chameleon Sting. 
So really, it's a uh, it's really a game of carefully dodging all the uh, attacks as well as not hitting the top spikes. In the original version, there wasn't spikes at the top, but now with that in mind, it's better to just get hit by the nose or eyes. Better than taking 12 points of damage. All right, I destroyed the nose. Last thing is the red eye. Ow. And down he goes. This took several. Uh, this was so annoying to get through, and even then I took half of half of my life bars gone. In several runs, I completely died because I took too much damage from either the nose or eyes, mainly the nose. Oh well. Now it's time to move on to Sigma Stage Three, where things ramp up even further. Another vertical climb, a common theme with Sigma Fortress stages. And a combination of all these turn cannons and mega tortoises. Oh, it's not really too bad. What really makes this stage difficult is this sequence of bosses coming up. We now have to fight the five remaining Mavericks. Here's Armored Armadillo. Oh well, now that actually can use his weakness, he becomes much simpler as it can't really block my shots anymore. And here I also realize I can duck under his rolling shields by just sliding. And in fact I can actually damage him when he's rolling. Oh Armadillo, how impaired are you from your weakness? He was the hard basically one of the hardest bosses originally, next to Quanger and Octopus, but now he's Cinch. Well, not as easy as Storm Eagle or Chameleon, but he's now been downgraded to basically a veteran difficulty boss. And his healing isn't too much of a problem. Even more difficult to climb up with all these dig labors and batons, I decided to skip this entire process and just go ahead. Oh, hi, Sting Chameleon. The floor is kind of broken, as there used to be mud, and apparently the doors are floating in midair, so it's a weird graphic bug. And like several of the other Maverick bosses, uh, his weakness really trivializes him. Though not as much in the original game, due to, due to having less weapon ammo, I can't completely uh, stun lock them to death. So I, I must rely on the other weapons or go back on my buster. And, he, and even though he's using the rain spike from ceiling attack, it's a little bit uh, less uh, hazardous due to me being able to knock him out of that state with the boomerang cutter. Ah, uh, that was way too close for comfort. And finished him off. And yeah, don't run into those spikes on the left, or the right. More dig labors and spikes, just use Chameleon Sting. And Mandrel returns. He's, st he's still uh, pretty weak against the Shotgun Ice, which freezes him, but unlike the original game, he can break out of it a little bit easily, more easily. And the fact he's faster than before, so... It's still a pretty fun uh, of freezing him in mid punch or, or jump, but it only takes him down to about uh, a third of his health. Not much to say about him, uh, other that I haven't said before. Really though, with the with the combination of the Hadouken, which I should have used more, and the Robot Mask, the Maverick weaknesses, it's pretty simple. Here, what you're supposed to do is get absorbed by or eaten by these gulp furs or gulp fish, and then um, destroy it so you can actually make these jumps. But because I didn't destroy the because I had destroyed the first set of gulp furs before I was supposed to get in them, I decided I had to do a neon jump to make it pass. Second one, I was able to make it the way it was supposed to. Ah, uh, 
Here's the hardest Maverick refight out of all eight. Octopus was already one of the most difficult due to his room, but now it's even more challenging due to the shape of this room. With the addition of those spikes in, in the middle of the room, it's very challenging to avoid his attacks. That's why I keep getting hit by one of those. And the rolling shield doesn't really stun uh, Octopus as it was before. I really should have used the boomerang cutter to cut off his tentacles, but I, that didn't really come to my, my mind when I was doing the recording. So yeah, just uh, even more careful game dodging everything while not skewing yourself on the spikes. And yeah, that last dodge for the fish. Oh, I don't know how I did that originally. But now the, the hardest Maverick refight is complete. Another segment with all these ray liners, turn cannons, and side fallers. I, yeah, I couldn't make that jump without taking a hit. Here's a pretty funny thing that happened here. Yep, barely made that jump. I don't know how I did it. Alright, here's the flame out refatch. This time, with instead of conveyor belts and lava, we have conveyor belts and spikes. Probably due to the limitations of ROM, ha ROM hacking and the sprite sheet available. And the storm tornado, like in the original game, doesn't really do that much against him, other than doing quite a bit of damage. I should have positioned it a little bit better so that he would get hit by it more than once. The room feels a bit bigger though. So, a lot more uh, long jumping. And, li and like with Octopus, I should have used the cu uh, boomerang cutter to cut off his trunk. Of course, that wouldn't remove the hardest part of this fight, with all this jumping and him switching the room around. That was really the hardest part I found. And of course, he falls like he was before. Especially with the advent of the Storm Tornado, but the same t tactics as before, although adjusted for a bigger room. Alright, he defeated all, all eight of the Mavericks, so now it's time to fight the boss at this stage. D-Rex! D-Rex is pretty much the same as before, although he fails a little bit faster. So yeah, avoid getting crushed by him, which is instant death like it was before. And then, and just try hitting his head to do damage. The hard part is coming up when you when you reduce him to half health. Ow. And when he hits the wall and you're right on it, it'll knock you off. You must avoid the energy orb. One will be, you have to lure it towards the direction. And the other one will come to the center of the room. So you either need to slide under it, or just wall jump over it. And this last orb I couldn't dodge because of uh, bad positioning. Ow. But D-Rex is about as difficult as he was before, though with slightly more health and speed. Alrighty then, the mainline three Sigma stages have been completed. And the next part, I'll be going after Sigma in the final Sigma stage. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Doodles!